Hello, my name is Mike, and this is a bike. In our last episode, we took this bike from a rather uh, unloved location and brought it here where we could do, do a little bit of work on it. And uh, we were able to successfully remove the fuel tank and get a little starting fluid in there and get it to fire off a little bit on starting fluid. And we also found that the fuel system was complete junk and that the fuel pump and the pickup screens and all that inside this, the tank were in bad shape. So we immediately ordered the parts and they're still not here. So while we're waiting for our parts to arrive, we're gonna go ahead and change the oil in this vehicle. We know that the engine is solid. It sounds like it's really very good. So uh, there's no reason why we can't go ahead and change the oil. Uh, a lot of times I wait until I hear it run first because if I've got to take it all apart, then there's no point in putting fresh oil in it just to drain it back out again. Well, we're probably not gonna to have to go into this engine. So I've got some tools over here. We'll go ahead and change the oil while we'll, we'll wait for the parts to arrive. And then uh, hopefully uh, the parts will arrive in the next couple of days and we will continue putting this back together. Um, I'm also likely to take some of the stuff off so I can get in there and do a little more cleaning. There's a nice, nice film of dust, dirt, and stuff. Uh, the, the elements weren't kind to this bike is what I'm trying to say. So we're going to be kind to it. Stick around. Somewhere in a dusty, dirty back alley in western Arizona is an old farm trying to cram a square peg into a round hole. He'll work on anything just as long as it's got at least two cool wheels. about Victory is that, well, it has just one oil system for both the engine and the transmission. A lot of people don't like that. Uh, they say, well, if your transmission goes out, then it damages the engine or vice versa. Uh, Harley-Davidson, they traditionally have one oiling system for the engine, one for the transmission, and even one for the primary system. Uh, most uh, European and Japanese bikes, like the Victory, keep it all in one. That way, uh, again, it's easier to do servicing on. One simply needs to drain the oil, put a new filter on it, and you're good to go. So it's a little less expensive than uh, doing one on, say, a Harley. Uh, it's a little easier to do, uh, but as some people may have uh, correctly identified, it could cause problems. My experience has been, as you saw in, uh, in the last, uh, well, a couple of videos back, when we took the engine apart on that trike, which had a transmission failure, it didn't damage the engine components. The rest of the engine was just fine. So it's not necessarily true. If you catch it in time and you get it fixed before that metal has a chance to circulate, uh, as long as your oiling system has a good filter and all that, it's not necessarily going to be an issue. So we have our handy dandy Victory oil filter socket assembly. We have some Allen wrenches because, well, I don't know what size it is, and they changed sizes over the years. Uh, we're going to be using the Napa 1550. It's a nice thick oil for a nice air-cooled engine and summer's coming around the corner. Uh, their, their full synthetic is actually made by uh, Valvoline. So it's a high-end, high-quality oil. And then we're going to use something called ZDDP. ZDDP is an oil additive used uh, to replace the uh, zinc that used to go into motor oils. So let me tell you a little story about uh, zinc. Used to be they put zinc in motor oil as a uh, a metal on metal protective layer, and uh, in places like where your flat tappet cam would ride on the lobes, those are the areas that were protected by zinc. Well, with the advent of catalytic converters in the early 70s, uh, they found that the zinc was bonding to the catalyst in the catalytic converter and keeping it from doing its job. So they removed zinc from motor oil, and it, it, almost as soon as they took the zinc out of motor oil. Uh, cars, at least I know American cars, started eating camshafts left and right. 
because that protected boundary was no longer there, the flat tappet cams would just get torn up. Now, since then, pretty much all the manufacturers have gone to roller cams. So you have a rolling wheel on that cam lobe instead of just a flat surface grinding against it. Uh, I still like to use it. I, I know when they design these engines uh, that they're aware of that, but I like it because things like timing chains, you still have a little bit of friction there. There's a lot of areas besides the cam where that friction is greatly reduced by adding a zinc additive. And if you don't have a catalytic converter on your vehicle, there's no reason why you can't add uh, a zinc additive to it. Uh, stuff's about 10 bucks for a little bottle like this. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's just a way to ensure longevity of your engine and components. Uh, some, there are some uh, brands of oil that are specific for motorcycles. And uh, you guys are absolutely welcome to use that because, well, most of those have uh, zinc of some kind in the oil. But if you're using off-the-shelf uh, auto parts store or Valvoline or automotive oil, you're going to want to add the zinc additive just to give yourself that much more protection. This is odd. Typically it's a hex. Somebody has replaced this one with a square drive, which uh, neither here nor there works better or worse. I just couldn't figure out why I couldn't get the darn hex in it until I realized somebody had put a different um, unit in it, different plug in it. And there's a little bit of debris on the old magnet. And as is par for the course for me is, well, I forgot to bring a rag with me. You know, I'm one of them guys that, uh, you know, goes to the buffet, piles on a bunch of food on my plate, and doesn't bring a napkin with me, and ultimately ends up wearing it. So, let me go find some place to put all this oil besides on my hands, and uh, we'll go ahead and put the plug back in and get some fresh oil in the beast. Um, change pretty straightforward on these bikes. Um, I put five quarts in. The amount of oil this engine uses varies depending on year. Uh, the early, early bikes, they took more than six quarts. I know that on my cross country, it takes a little over five quarts. 
This being the first 2002 model year that I've owned, I'm not real sure. So once we've got it fired up and running and the oil can uh, uh, circulate where it needs to go, we'll, we'll double check it again. It may need more. That oil pan was really full. That's a seven quart pan and there was every bit of seven quarts in that. But as I mentioned before, the oil smelled varnishy. So I'm wondering if some fuel hadn't gotten in there. Um, and I, I wouldn't really understand how that could happen with fuel injection, but I've seen it happen on carbureted engines where fuel can get down into, past the rings and down into the crankcase. All right, any questions on doing oil changes? Yeah, you down in front. On, on, on Stranger? Speak up, guys in the back can't hear you. Oh, the, the Victory logo on Stranger? Yeah, I, I had that made up. Yeah, well, yeah, I could have just gone with a regular bumper sticker. And why is it only on one side? Well, because I have dots. Yeah, dots. If you look at the skin of my arm, there's these little brown dots. I have like pink skin and brown dots. Some people call them freckles. See, uh, I don't know if you noticed that my hair is kind of a well, it was very red when I was younger, so I'm what they call a ginger. Yeah, the sun and I, we don't, we don't get along. And if too much sun radiates on me, I go from bright white to, and, and brown dots to bright pink and black dots. And uh, in an effort to keep the back of my neck from smelling like burnt bacon, well, I put this in the back window so when the sun's behind me, it, uh, it won't burn my skin and, and so forth. And, uh, and I didn't want to obscure the entire back window. I've got to be able to see out the rattle window to see cars behind me. So I had this thing made up. Serves a double purpose, promotes the brand, and protects me from the sun. Well, parts have arrived. Um, this is the kit that I found on eBay. And it does come with the pickup screens, or socks if you will. Um, the problem is the tubes that went between these screens and the pump, well, they're kind of disintegrated and, well, they're not very easy to duplicate. They're kind of a molded plastic. So that's going to be my bigger challenge, but I've, I've taken a look at the pump. The pump appears to be the correct one. Now I dug through my stuff thinking that, you know, uh, I might have some parts that I could use because I have done a couple of these before, and I did find a pump that I had taken out of a Victory Hammer. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it too no longer has the tubes attached to it. The tubes are long gone. Something interesting I noticed though, on the Hammer, they don't actually have a fuel gauge. Uh, on this bike, there's a gauge. So this is the wire that plugged into that sending unit to, uh, to deliver a message to the gauge, how much fuel is in it. Whereas on the Hammer, it simply had this uh, this little sensor here instead, and that sensor would turn on a low fuel light. So on the hammers, there's no gauge. You just simply rode until that light came on and then hoped there was a gas station within riding distance. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put uh, the new pump, uh, comes with a pressure regulator, new pump, new regulator on here. I'm gonna come up with some hose and try to make some calculations, kind of trying to figure out how much hose I need to go from where the pump mounts to this area here that that uh, pickup screen is going to lay in to pick up the fuel and uh, hopefully I can come up with something that will work. And I forgot to mention <clears throat> the O-rings that, that go around this piece are still available. I got these on Amazon, believe it or not. If you go to the dealership, they're about uh, 30 bucks each. If you go to Amazon, well, you can get the pair for like $17.95 or something. So because the price was so good, and if I if I bought more than $30 worth of merchandise, I'd get my shipping for free, I bought two sets, knowing that, well, eventually I would use them, and uh, then I could get free shipping. So there I am being a cheapskate again. And digging through my stuff, I also found this. So I don't know if you noticed, I... I I don't think I pointed it out in the video that uh, when I took the air filter off of the um, off of the bike to get in there and spray the starting fluid to try to get it to start, this seal uh, was damaged and dust and dirt were getting into the engine. So I've got one of these also. 
So I've got everything I need to put this thing back together, theoretically. Uh, so if nothing goes wrong, we'll be able to uh, get that uh, get that bike started up. We'll get it um, brought it into the garage here where we can start taking it apart even further and uh, do some cleanup and some uh, further additional improvements. So here we go.
together now the real question is going to be well you know those little rubber seals where those two uh, studs kind of came through for the fuel pump and pickup tube and uh, I reused the rubber it felt fairly uh, soft like it would still seal okay uh, we're gonna find out um, as you saw I kind of had to guesstimate the length of tubing for those uh, pickup socks are supposed to be down in here so they're gonna be close enough they're not gonna be perfect but as long as you don't let your tank run down below, I don't know, you know, three quarters of a tank or something, you shouldn't run out. Uh, so we're going to put some fuel in it and see if it leaks out. Right now, no fuel should be able to come out. We're going to find out right now, and if it's good, we'll put it back on the bike, and we'll give it a shot, firing it up. You notice the tank looks kind of shiny. Yeah, that's going to take a little bit of polishy stuff to it. Want to see how well the, the finish survived. It's actually not too bad. There's a little bit of blistering from the, uh, what would you call it, the, the bra, the, the uh, leather thing going right down the middle of the tank. What do you call that? Come on, gas, go in. cap. Seal's pretty worn out, but it'll do for what we're we're trying to accomplish here. No leaks that I can see. Let's get a little uh, illumination on it here. Fantastic. Absolutely no leakage. We are ready to put this back on our project. Put the air filter back on it. This is that gasket I was talking about. So before I put the air filter on, well this guy has been leaking air and dirt down into that somewhere. That's not good. So let's throw that back on real fast. Right, we got our air filter with the can in, properly cleaned and oiled. We have our new gasket. Go ahead and put this on. We'll put the tank on it. We'll connect the fuel hose. We'll put the battery back in it. We'll hit the button. You should have running, idling, rideable motorcycle. And if that's the case, I'll probably take it around the a block and then pull it inside the garage so we can take all this stuff off, get in there and do a proper assessment, cleaning, and so forth.
All right, let's see if this thing starts. Key on. And I hear a pump run. That's something we didn't have before. And so, no, it could be good. Let's see here. Ooh. Can't battery again. Give me a minute. Alright, so we've had it in the charger for 37 seconds. That shouldn't be enough, but you know, try it anyway. Hmm. Guess you have to charge it longer. Well, the battery's been boiling for about 10, 15 minutes now, but uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit, give it a little bit of this, see if that doesn't uh, get its interest a little bit better, see if we can get it to pop, and uh, hopefully by then the injectors will have sufficient fuel pressure to take over. Seen a lot of smoke come out. Hmm. Let's let the battery boil longer. Right, we're going to give this a try again. Let's see what happens. One property. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking our injectors are plugged. That would be my guess. Well, next step is to dig into those injectors. So, we have fuel pump, we have fuel pressure. I guess you're just gonna have to come back for the next episode to find out what it's gonna take to make this run. And we're gonna go right after those injectors. I do have a spare set on hand. So come back at the next episode and we'll get it running eventually. Thanks for watching. I'm not going to leave you hanging. We'll get her started. All right, tank is off. We're going back in. Right underneath the throttle body the injectors, they're not too bad. We'll get them. Now, there's one injector there, and the other one's you know, it's back over here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the throttle body, pick it up. A uh, fuel rail is held by a small screw right here, and one just like it on the other side pull the rail off and then we can pop those injectors out. I've loosened the clamps that hold the throttle body boot on. Let's see if we can get that to pop up off of here without breaking other components as I'm you know prone to do. There it goes. And we don't really even have to disconnect the cables, we can just kind of pull this up and lean it out of the way, something like that. And then that allows us access to our injectors. And look at all the dirt and cobwebs, it's still in here. Okay. I really want to get this running so I can get it on a trailer again and take it and get it uh, to the local car wash and get all this stuff blasted out of here. All right, I've got the injectors unplugged on both ends. This is our fuel rail here. We should be able to just kind of give it a tug. Should be able to work it right off. 
sounds good anyway. Uh, got the injector rail out, but unfortunately, uh, one of the injectors stayed in for some reason. The other one that came out, well, I really had to fight it. That O-ring is so dried out. And you can see there's just fuel getting to them, but they're just not opening. So there's my rail. And uh, the clip is missing here. So we'll get that injector out, we'll pop some new ones in, we'll put this rail back on, put the air cleaner back on, fire it up. There we go. Brand new injectors. Get these babies in.
smoothed out for a while there and then it uh, and then it died but we can work with that so the answer to everyone's question is will it run will it ride again the answer is unequivocally yes now it's time to make it nice so there'll be more episodes to come we'll get it cleaned up uh we'll get a new seat for it and we'll get tires and we'll make a nice ride out of this thanks for watching <laughs>